All right, so before we even open Premiere Pro, we're gonna wanna create a set of organized folders. Um, you're gonna wanna do this so that nothing gets lost or corrupted when you're editing. It's also important to know um, where your stuff is being saved so you do not lose any of your exports or project files. First, we'll go ahead and create a main folder with our project name. Um, inside this main folder, we're gonna create a set of subfolders that include our footage, our audio, graphics, project files, and exports. Okay, now that we've created this set of folders, we're able to get started with Premiere. First, we're gonna name our project. We're just gonna name it the same thing we named our main folder. Save our project to the file folders that we just made. With our project created, we can now start importing media. And there are a couple ways we can do this. The first way is by dragging and dropping files directly into the workplace. You can also go to the file menu and choose import and then navigate to the location of your media files and then select them. And then once our files are imported, we can organize them once again through the use of bins. And bins are really important because they allow you to add another layer of organization in your Premiere project. All right, so now that we're fully set up, we can begin editing. Um, to start, we'll create a new sequence. And to do this, we'll drop our media into the timeline panel. And from here on out, it is important to save regularly. All, you always wanna be saving so that nothing gets lost. Premiere does auto saves, but it's important that you keep saving um, while you're editing, just cause the auto save doesn't always catch everything that you do. Okay, so now that we have all of our media in Premiere Pro, we can begin going over the different panels that are in the software. Um, we'll start with the timeline panel. This is where you can edit, arrange, and sequence your media. Um, like I said, you can drag clips from the project panel into the timeline uh, to start editing. You'll most likely spend a bulk of your time in this section. The source panel displays the selected clip or sequence in the project panel. You can use this panel to preview clips before you add them to the timeline, and you can also trim clips before adding them to the timeline, which is very helpful. The program panel displays your sequence as you edit it in the timeline. Um, you can use this panel to preview your video before you export it. There are many tools in Premiere Pro, um, and it's easy to get confused with what they all do, but we'll give a basic rundown of what each of them do, and so you'll have a better idea of how to use them in your projects. The selection tool is used to select and move clips in the timeline. Um, you can click and drag a clip to move it in a different position or adjust its duration. The selection tool can also be used to select mul multiple clips at once. The razor tool allows you to cut clips into smaller segments. Um, you can use this tool to split a clip into two parts or to remove a portion of the clip by making a cut and then deleting the unwanted section. The hand tool is used to scroll and navigate the timeline. Uh, you can use the tool to move the view of the timeline left or right, up or down. And you can also use it to zoom in or out. The pen tool is used to create keyframes in the timeline. Keyframes are used to adjust properties of a clip, such as its opacity, scale, or position. I will not be going into everything you can do with keyframes. Basically, think of it as a kind of animation you can do with different effects. The type tool allows you to add text to your video project. You can use the type tool to create titles, captions, or other text overlays. And you can also customize the font size and color of the text. Okay, so the zoom tool is used to adjust the zoom level of the timeline, and you can use this to zoom in or out on your timeline or to adjust the level specific clip or sequence. The crop tool is used to adjust the framing of a clip. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You can use the crop tool to crop the edges of a clip or just to adjust the aspect ratio. Premiere Pro also offers a range of audio tools um, such as the volume, pan controls, and the audio mixer panel. Um, you can use these tools to adjust the volume and position of audio tracks as well as add effects and filters to each audio clip. The effects panel allows you to add visual effects to your clips, such as color correction, transitions, and special effects. You can select an effect from the panel and then apply it to a clip in the timeline. You can also adjust the settings of the effect to customize its appearance. All right, so that's basically it for the tool section of Premiere Pro. Now we're gonna get into some timeline editing. So like I said, the timeline panel is where you assemble your video project. Um, this is where you drag and drop your video and audio clips from the project panel into the timeline. Um, you can basically, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to know is how to cut. Um, cutting allows you to rearrange your clips and cut out unwanted parts of it. Um, for this, you'll be using primarily the razor tool uh, to cut your clips into smaller segments. Okay, to add an effect to your clip, such as different cross dissolves, uh, wipes, fades, and different audio effects, such as constant gain transitions, you're gonna to want to select the clip in the timeline panel and click the effects panel and then browse for your desired effect. Right now it's going to use the cross dissolve and then you're going to drag and drop that on top of your clip to create a seamless transition. You can also create custom effects by using Premiere Pro's built-in tools such as the pen tool, um, 
motion controls or keyframing. For example, you can create different animations with your clips by changing different keyframe settings, such as the scale and position. Once you're done cutting and adding effects and transitions, you can preview using the playback controls in the timeline panel. And you can also use the program monitor to preview your project in full screen mode or to check the final output before exporting. So that's the basic rundown for the timeline panel. Um, now we're getting into some audio editing techniques. One of the most basic audio editing te techniques in Premiere Pro is adjusting the volume levels of certain audio clips. You can adjust the overall volume of a clip using the audio mixer panel or by using the audio track mixer in the timeline panel. This allows you to balance the audio levels of different clips or adjust the overall volume of your entire project. Another important audio editing technique is removing certain noises from clips. Um, there are a few ways you can do this. Um, some ways are pretty simple, such as dropping the denoise effect or the noise reduction effect onto certain clips. Um, this is a pretty simple way to do it, although it's not effective all of the time. You can also use different audio effects and filters to enhance your sound quality and add a creative flair. Um, there are a few effects you can do this with, such as EQ, reverb and compression, which you can apply to a clip to adjust its tonal balance and spatial characteristics. You can access these effects by selecting a clip in the timeline panel and then opening the effect controls panel. On top of that, there are some more in-depth effects, such as the parametric equalizer, which allows you to take certain frequencies and adjust them and manipulate them to create a specific sound you want. This is very useful for audio uh, restoration. Okay, so now that we've gone over the audio editing side of things, we're gonna move on to titles and graphics. Okay, to find your titles and graphics, you're gonna open the essential graphics panel. Um, here you have a variety of different graphics you can use that are pre-made. And you can simply create your own by clicking on an effect you would like. Um, right now we're just gonna use the basic lower third and then you're gonna to wanna to drag and drop that over your clip. And from here, you can adjust the text, font color, size, and position of the title. You can also add different effects to your titles and graphics, such as different fades, and you can also do, again, animations with keyframes. All right, so now that we've covered most of the basics, we can get into some of the more advanced uh, Premiere Pro editing techniques, uh, such as multi-camera editing. So this is possible in Premiere. Um, all you need to do is drag and drop all of your different angles into the timeline, and then, Select all clips, right click, and press synchronize. This will synchronize your clips uh, through the use of the audio that is on each of the angles. Uh, you wanna make sure each angle has audio so that it is able to be synced together. You're also able to adjust the speed of each clip by right clicking and going to speed slash duration. And from here, you're able to change the speed and duration of your clip. And you're also able to reverse the speed and if you're trying to make slow motion video, you can maintain the same audio pitch while slowing down the clip. Premiere also allows you to do some color grading. You can do this by navigating to the Lumetri color panel. And from here, you can change a variety of settings, such as the temperature of a clip, the tint, the saturation, and different light settings. Um, that is the basic correction. You can get into some more creative stuff with the faded film, sharpening, and then changing the shadow. It can get pretty in depth pretty quickly um, when you're color grading in Premiere. So once you've finished editing your video, go, you're gonna wanna go to File, Menu, and then select Export. Um, from here, you can customize the export settings by adjusting the video and audio settings, such as the codec, resolution, frame rate, and audio bit rate. And you can also add captions and other effects to your exported video. There's a wide range of different popular presets for um, platforms such as YouTube and Vimeo, as well as Facebook. Once you've customized the export settings, you're gonna to wanna to choose the location to save the exported file to. Um, we already created an export folder, so you're just gonna to wanna to select that folder, and then you're gonna to wanna to name your exported file. You can also choose to export multiple clips or sequences in batch by selecting the Q button, and then you're gonna to wanna to click, click the export button to start the export process. And then Premiere Pro will render and export your video based on the settings you have chosen. So it could take longer if you're using 4K footage versus like 720p. All right, so those are the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, to learn more, go to learn.longmanpublicmedia.org um, where you can learn more about different softwares and different kinds of equipment um, to use at Longman Public Media. Uh, thanks for watching.